if you could understand the Matt era, uh, the lines were drawn, the battle lines were clearly drawn in the sand. And at that time, there was a dividing line called East Avenue. That is now IH-35. But East is East and West is West and never the twain shall meet. We were literally, at that time, forced to live on the east side of East Avenue. And the community center, to me, at least around churches and this enigma, this mystery called Anderson High School. And so we were proud of it. We were extremely proud. Uh, we didn't have too much else to be proud of at that time. Why do you think the uh, turnout's going to be good tonight? Because we're concerned. We're concerned. Yeah, they're concerned. Absolutely. When they said tear the building down, it was like, oh no, you, oh no, oh no. You know, we would rather for the building to just be there, uh, but do not tear the building down. <laughs> And we're just here to stand up for the, the history of the Anderson High School. Well, number one, it was the only black high school in Austin, Texas. It was the original high school for the black students. And you can't just destroy that history in uh, all of the accolades that went with it. I just hope that the district definitely put forth an effort to making Anderson uh, on Thompson alive and well and a vibrant uh, facility, again, like it was back in the 50s and in the 60s. But when we got to Anderson, it was nice, it was new, and it was very accommodating because one of the things was to try and be sure that we were satisfied on this side, the east side of East Avenue. So we didn't spread and sprinkle when 53, 54 came about the uh, integration. My older sister went to high school and I was still in elementary school. And I got an opportunity to go to football games with her and see that Anderson band, and that was it. I knew that I was gonna go to Anderson. Like Ross said, we didn't have any other place to go, and it was just fine with me, because I was going to Anderson. Walking to my homeroom, Mrs. Mary Lou Street was my homeroom teacher, as well as my English teacher. This is my homeroom. Right here was where I would come every morning and start my day in Mrs. Street's homeroom. The major job structure, as I recall, in Austin, Texas, then was teaching. And so if they wanted to teach, they were going to be somewhere in the school system. And because of their skin color, 
that talent that they had could not be utilized or would not be utilized on the west side of town. So we benefited from it on the east side of town. We really had the teachers that cared about us. My mother worked in private homes. So she's out there in Allendale or somewhere ironing and washing or whatever it took to get me my 299 ballerinas from Baker. <laughs> She didn't, okay. she wasn't there knowing all of the stuff that's going on during the day, you know, and plus you're at school. But these women were the kind of women, women like Miss Hart. Oh, no. That yeah. was your, that Miss, was my People girl. that would just call you in and men like C.P. Johnson just call yes. you in and say, yes. you know, I need to talk to you about this or that or whatever. And we just had some values put into us. Most of the teachers, uh, uh, if they didn't, uh, go to Anderson themselves and return, they uh, they still live here in the community. And most of them, except quite a few, few, I would see them at church and I still, those that are still alive, still living, I see them now and uh, and I can appreciate them for what, they, uh, what they've what they done for the East Side and for the, uh, for the uh, Anderson students. I think everything that we've all said is, is, is what we think of Anderson, but in the, what, 40s, 50s, 60s, Anderson High School was the heartbeat of our community. Uh -huh. It was the heartbeat of the community. And when the school closed, the community, the heartbeat stopped. The community just was not a community anymore in, in the way that it was then. Everybody was scattered to the winds this way, that way. There was no cohesiveness. There was no togetherness. My child went to McCallum. Your child went to Reagan. Travis. Somebody else's child went to Travis. Travis. So we had no connection. We had no, we had, that, that t togetherness was gone. And it just decimated our community. And we've never gotten it back. And it's something that I don't think in my lifetime, maybe, somewhere down the road, but it will never be back in my lifetime. And I am sad that my children miss this. We thought we, 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 thought we, were, we, thought we were the greatest things. Ah, yes, <laughs> yes. We, were, we, were, we, were, we didn't know, you know. And, and, and now my children will, will miss all of this. And, and for that, I am very, very sad. All right, we will now move to public comment. This is the time we dedicate, our, I dedicate ourselves to welcoming and encouraging public comments during our regular board meeting and to commit ourselves to active listening. The first speaker we have is Gabriela Vasquez. Good evening, buenas noches. My name is Gabriela Vasquez. I'm the mother of Alasa Jr. and Ace Kramer will trigger no. warning without board consent, but the board will monitor the They did not come down to our numbers as for the calendar. overflow. In some actions, like a move to consolidate, so we'll have to try um, for next would week. Would always require a board I not necessarily say misled, I've, but it is very no confusing of the process. And I just sort of also want for the number of us that were here, think about what it, it was and disappointing that nobody about that a lot got a chance to speak. They lied to us. I mean, there's no way we could not have had an opportunity to speak. I wanted to be on the local and national news that they lied, they never changed, they never intend to educate the children on the east side of I-35 who look like me. And for this gentleman to come in here from Dallas it's a disgrace. It's really disappointing. Come back next Monday. Here next month. How do you ensure that you can so it is very good. Um, we're going to continue to fight for it. 
lift the uh, yep. district organization lead. And so addressing those in the to get on the road down the road that's not in the Church. Church. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Virgin Carrington D. Witty. 